So I picked this ski up last year, around this time, got it for 200 bucks. It's a 650 Yamaha VXR, it's been running great, had it out a couple times already this year. Liked it so much I decided, hey, well, I get another one. So this one, right here, is a 93 Yamaha Wave Runner 3, comes with the same 650 engine. Um, and I got this one for a little under $200. Jet ski prices have kind of gone up lately. People are starting to pick these up more and more. I've still got those two over there. The first two I did. Um, but I'm probably going to sell those soon. Once I get um, both of these up and running. This pink one already runs. But this new one I got for a little under 200 bucks Comes with everything. Came with an engine. The only problem is the top end of the engine is blown. Well, not blown, but it got locked up. Um, the oil injection on the ski went because a, uh, a line got shriveled up, I guess, and uh, became disconnected, which is a pretty, pretty common reason for these engines to get locked up. It doesn't go. The pumps are usually extremely reliable. It's usually just you lose a line and then it screws over the whole ski. So, um, I'll actually open this up to show you. We've got the cylinder head right here. Um, it's already been taken apart. The guy I bought it from um, was gonna look at using it as a project, but I don't know if you can see. But that's the cylinder that went bad. Piston got stuck in there. Um, there you go. You get a view of the scoring on there. So we'll take a look inside here. See what we got. Front piston's fine. Um, what's the rear piston that went right there? You can see how bad that is. Rings are completely toast. Um, so yeah, this needs a, a new top end, new pistons. That. So the first thing we need to do is get the engine completely out of the ski, um, and then we can take a better look at it, and then get it on a bench, rebuild it. Out of all the jet skis I've bought, it's probably in the best condition. I mean, all the decals look pretty nice. There's no cracks in the hull. It's a lot bigger than the VXR. It's about 150 pounds more, but it's more of a more of a cruising jet ski. It's got some storage in it. Got a little digital. I think that's a um, fuel level indicator. But yeah, I'm excited about this one. I've been wanting to get one of these Wave Runner threes for a while, and saw this one is a little bit of a deal um, but hopefully I don't have to spend too much getting this engine running um, I can have a nice pair of 650 wave runners to mess around with on the water so the first so. thing we got to do before we remove this engine is I'm going to remove the oil injection I know a lot of people say oh you don't need to you just need to make sure that your lines are good and in good condition and all that but me personally, all my other jet skis, I use premix on them. I just like that that little peace of mind that hey, even if I blow a line, it doesn't matter, um, just because I'm using premix and I don't need to worry about oil injection. Period. So I'm gonna remove this. You don't have to, but I just like not having to rely on it um, as a means of lubricating my engine um, because then you get what happened here. Um, so we're gonna pull this out and then. Uh, work on getting the engine all disconnected and then move on from there so Yamaha loves their 10 millimeter bolts and nuts that's for sure a good amount of oil so we'll definitely have to power wash this inside out let's try to get this last tube off at the filter without spilling whatever's in it all over the place okay I got that We got the oil tank out. Now that we got that disconnected, we'll take off these fuel lines, the sender, and the return. 
We got the starter motor, electrical cable that will take off, and then we'll have to get into the electrical box to remove this one. So we'll start with these fuel lines. There's one. Yeah, that's on there good and tight. I don't think those are coming off. Yep, so I'm just gonna cut these. There's two on there to pull off. There's that one. Okay, make sure we keep that washer. Put that nut back on. Ice collar. There's a 12 millimeter bolt right here. There will be two of them. I should say before you do this, make sure there's no battery hooked up to this. Safety's number one priority on this channel. So we got all these screws on the back. These don't need to come off so we can get inside. Okay, let's crack this open. There we go. So, we got this open. This, right here, this cable is the one that connects to the uh, engine. So we want to remove these four wires. So we're going to mark them, at least these green ones, because they're the only two that are the same, so that we know where each one goes when we reconnect everything. So that one's got one dash, that one's got two. Um, let's see. This one's one, and this one's two. There we go, we got that one off. There we go. There, got all four of them disconnected now. So now, oh wait, there's one more. Got a ground, looks like a grounding wire. Right here, I believe. I'm just gonna cut this wire, since it's locked in with a couple of others that we'd need to disconnect. And uh, I'm just gonna cut this and then we can rewire it manually with some shrink wrap or something. To get my, my muscles out. So normally these engines are around, I think, 90 pounds when they're all put together. This is the... Pull it off the coupler. On the back. Nope, there go the uh, spacers. Probably should have... Eh, we'll figure that out later. Make sure no lines are... Oh, we do got, oh, yeah, duh. the choke cable, and there's this other one, other hose right here that needs to come off still, so do those real quick. Okay, so I got the throttle cable along with the choke cable removed, um, along with this other hose back here. I just ended up cutting that one, same as the others, so now we should be able to pull this thing out. There it is, just like that. We got the bottom half of this engine out, along with all the other parts. So now we can work on cleaning this all up and then uh, looking at fixing it. OK, 
Okay. So we got the motor out. Now we need to take these pistons off. So on these pistons, you got two rings, one on each side that holds the pin in right here. Kind of turn it so you can maybe see. Right in here. We're just gonna pop this in. And pull it out right there. There you go. There's one of them. Set that off. There's two, just like that. I can just push this pin out. Like that. There you go, you got that piston off. Easy. Whoops. That one shot across the room. Luckily I saw where it landed. That one's not coming out. We could probably pound the pin out this way. Let me see these burrs, they're coming off. There we go. Yeah. You can see, it's definitely still stuck in there. We'll need a new pin for this one. And let's see this bearing. Yeah, we'll probably replace this too. It's a little, a little rough looking. Yeah, we should be able to pick up a new one. Um, and you compare it to this one. This other one's much more shiny, much more clean. So yeah, we'll probably keep this one. Um, we might be able to get away with that. Um, but then again, the new pistons I buy might even just come with a brand new couple of those. So before we take these in to the machine shop to get honed and bored out, I'm probably going to go with 0.5 millimeters over, over bore. Um, I'm going to clean these out so you can kind of see, a little hard, but there is a bunch of sand down in here. So, so we're going to take it outside, power wash, get it all cleaned up, hose that stuff out of there. So there's a, there's a good amount of sand in there and that'll just trap heat instead of... Uh, pushing it out through the coolant system like it's supposed to. So we'll get this cleaned up and then uh, we can get it to the machine shop and get it honed and ready to go, so. We've got the cylinder off at the machine shop. We're gonna clean this up. I've already wiped it down a little bit. Um, but we're just going to hit this lower end with uh, some compressed air, clean it out, make sure there's nothing in there. The uh, crankshaft seems to be pretty smooth. I don't see any issues with that. It rotates freely, no binding or anything. Um, so yeah, we'll just get this cleaned up and then uh, we can hopefully start putting this together soon. For this rebuild, I ended up picking up this uh, WSM top end rebuild kit right here. It's uh, meant for a 0.5 millimeter overbore, so that's what we uh, sent the cylinder off to the machine shop to be bored at. Um, 
you can see it comes with two new pistons right here. One, two. They have wrist pins and clips in them. And then it's got all your gaskets, stuff like that, cool sticker, bearings. And yeah, this was, uh, I think, 200 bucks on eBay. Um, you can buy it directly from WSM, but it's about $20 more um, if you just go through a dealer on eBay that carries the exact same kit. So I definitely recommend that um, if you're going to go this route. Okay, so while we got the engine out of here, we're going to clean up this compartment, get rid of all that nasty gunk off the bottom, get it power washed, and uh, just get it looking nice. I mean, it already looks pretty good, but uh, we'll just get it cleaned up a little bit, and then... Uh, we can hopefully get the engine put back in and get it running. Okay, it looks like this thing came with about five gallons of gas in it, so we're gonna siphon that out. I like to drain any gas that I get in any of these when I pick them up now, ever since uh, I picked up that VXR and half the gas in the tank was water, so it's just a good practice. I'm sure gas prices are expensive, but I mean, you can check it out after you, you siphon it, and then if it's any good, you can maybe use it for like some lawn equipment or something. There we go. Just like that. Pull that off, set it to the side. That gas looks pretty dirty. Looks almost like it's mixed with something, but it shouldn't be. But let's siphon it out. So, I think there's a lot of sand inside the gas tank itself. So we're definitely going to want to pull all this out, clean it up, and... Uh, get it cleaned out of there you can definitely see it down through here you can see all that dark stuff so we're gonna have to clean all that out and get it uh, cleaned up in there okay so in order to get all the sand out of here we're just gonna pull the tank and then uh, hose it out and get it all cleaned up just because there's so much sand can't just siphon it out um, so we're going to disconnect all the fuel lines, get uh, these four bolts out, and then we should just be able to lift it right out of here.
trick. We'll just let this dry out and then we can get it back in the chest ski. So yeah, this thing, I'm just gonna remove these clips that hold these uh, floats in. They're falling apart, so I mean, these things aren't gonna do anything but get junk in the gas tank. So I might replace it at some point down the road, but I don't really need it. It's just a gas gauge. We'll just remove these, get any baked on stuff scraped off and get it back in there. Yeah, this is most likely because the reason these are falling apart so much is probably because of all the ethanol that uh, is in the gasoline nowadays. It used to be that there was no ethanol back when these were made. And uh, all the materials they used for gas and fuel systems back then get eaten by ethanol nowadays. So another thing I'll probably do at some point down the road, probably not anytime soon, but maybe as a future project, is to just replace all the fuel lines in this jet ski along with uh, my VXR right here just because I don't want those fuel lines to degrade over time kinda like how these floats have I mean look at that, that's just really bad um, because when they degrade they gum up the carburetors, fuel lines everything so, I'll get this cleaned up with a rag and just get it good enough to go back in without shedding a bunch of crap. But, yeah. Just put this back in. Because, I mean, I could just chop this and put this, I could just cut this off, but um, I'm going to look at maybe getting a replacement for it at some point. So. Put that back in. Okay, we got the cylinder head right here. We've removed all the gasket material um, that's been left over. We got a little bit of corrosion. So we're just gonna hit this with a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper um, on this piece of wood. This is just a jig I made up real quick. Um, just a nice flat piece of hardwood with some sandpaper stapled to it. So we're just gonna run this over this a couple times, just smooth it out, make it nice and clean. Um, just be careful if you do this, you don't want to sand any parts too hard because you don't want any hot spots we will get a uh, kind of curves or warped parts in here you want to keep it as flat as possible so we're just going to do a little bit of this just get it cleaned up and then uh, we'll do the same thing to the cylinder and then uh, probably hit the muffler um, gasket area too so Okay, that's pretty smooth. Still got a little bit, but like I said, you don't want to take too much off um, or else you'll get issues with the seal. So once we finish these, we're going to make sure to wash them off, um, make sure there's no flakes or anything that get left behind, um, and just make sure that they're good and clean and then uh, we can put them back together. There are a couple of nicks in here that I noticed um, that were there before, so I, I imagine those are tool marks from when they were uh, prying the cases away from each other. Very good. There's still some corrosion right here, but 
you just run your finger over it, it feels pretty smooth. Um, it's just the exhaust, so I'm not too worried about getting up. 100% perfect seal, but it should do. My VXR had surfaces very similar to this, and it's been running fine um, since I uh, got that one running, so I'm not too worried about this. You see on the exhaust, they didn't even bother um, getting this nice and bare metal or anything like that. It's painted over, and they just slapped the gasket on, so I'm not too worried. We'll just sand this one real quick, and that should be it. Okay, one last thing before we start putting this back together. We're going to install this oil pump block, remove these two bolts, remove this. This doesn't need to be here anymore. Um, and then uh, get this block on, so... There's the oil pump right there. You can sell this for like 20 bucks on eBay. This gasket on. <clears throat> there we go, we got that blocked off. Now we can put everything back together. Okay, so for the first step of getting this put back together, we need to oil this. We need to oil the crankshaft along with the bearings there in here. So I've just got some uh, two-stroke right here that I had laying around um, that was left over. We're gonna make sure to put oil in each of these holes. There's four of them, two on each cylinder, um, and those will oil the uh, bearings that go along the crankshaft here. Okay, now we'll just turn these a bit. I'm just gonna drop a couple drops on each of the bearings on these arms right here. Um, there's openings on both sides. Okay, so now we got these pistons. This came with the piston kit that I got. They're bored to 0.5 millimeters over. I believe is 20 thousandths. Um, so it comes with rings, comes with a piston, wrist pin, and then clips. So when you install pistons, this arrow right here indicates the direction of the exhaust. So you want to make sure that that arrow is pointing towards the exhaust. Which on this engine, the exhaust comes out this way. So we want to make sure these are facing out like that. Okay, so we got the rings right here. We're going to install one ring first before uh, getting it on there. So we're going to install the inside ring. So on this piston, we're going to install this ring on this side. And then on this piston, we're going to install it on the opposite right here. So that way, you can pop them both in and then slide the wrist pins in from each side. Um, and that will just make it way easier. So There we go. We got this wrist pin right here. Put a little bit of oil on this. Okay, so we'll oil this bearing. There we go. Okay, just slide it together. There we go, we got that piston on. Okay, so now when we go to install these, we want to make sure that we install them in the direct, correct direction. So, as you can see, right here, we'll focus. It's got a little beveled edge on it. You want, there's a pin right here that you want this bevel to go underneath. So I'll actually install these ones on this piston right now that's off just to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, there's the first one you can see right there. So it's gonna squeeze together underneath it like that once it's inside that cylinder. So we'll do the second one the exact same way. 
and then uh, get the ones on here that are already on the engine. Okay, we got those on there. That one's There we go. We got the pistons installed. Just like that. Easy peasy. I'm actually starting to think that removing these, sliding them into the cylinder with the rings, and then attaching them to the arm might be easier. Yeah, I might as well try it. Okay, got that one. This one, which we need to get another zip tie on top of. Try this one. Got that. That one's in. There we go. Finally. Okay, line up this rear one first. There we go. Now we gotta get those clips in. Just do it the same way. I just gotta maneuver underneath this cylinder. You know. that one. Now, we just need to line this and push it down onto the block. There we go. Turn this. There we go. Alright, now it's on to bolting everything down. I've printed off a couple of diagrams that just show where all the bolts go. I've gone through, sorted them out, um, labeled them. We've all got different names. I put the actual number that corresponds with the diagram here at the bottom, um, just so I know which one goes where, and I also wrote how many are supposed to be in there. I'm just gonna go through, I'm not gonna go through uh, which bolts which, just cause there's so many of them. Um, I'm just gonna bolt everything in, um, then get the top cover on, um, and then, that should be it for this engine. And then we should be good to drop it back inside the jet ski. So so before you do start putting bolts back in the engine, you do want to have a thread sealer. I'm just using this uh, Loctite thread sealant stick. It's rated for up to 300 um, degrees Fahrenheit, which I don't think these engines get anywhere near that. 
Um, so I'm just using this, this Loctite thread sealant stick, um, part number 504467. This is what I'm using. Uh, it makes applying Loctite to these threads pretty easy. And uh, we'll just get these all started, get them started to be threaded, and get it on there. Now this one doesn't have pins, but I believe this part is supposed to line up with this piece that sticks out, so we got that to work with. And that goes like that. Start fitting these, just get a couple in to line it up. Okay, so I got these bolts all torqued down. Um, on the casing, it says torque M8 to 3.0 kgm, which I believe is kilogram meters. Um, so I converted that over and it equals right around 22 foot pounds. So that's what I torqued down all of these bolts to. They're all marked with an eight on the top, um, which corresponds with the M8 on the casing. So pretty sure that's all we need to do as far as torquing these things down. So we're gonna take this back outside and get it back inside the ski. So. Okay, so we got the engine back outside. Got it all blocked off, cleaned up, new pistons, ready to go. So we're gonna try to drop this in, um, get it aligned. So we gotta make sure the main thing is that this coupler lines up with the coupler down there. And when I remove the engine, there were shims on each of these standoffs, but the problem is I didn't keep track of which shims were on where, so they can't. So they kind of all fell out on the bottom, got mixed up. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to do a little bit of alignment, kind of eyeball it, make sure that the coupler is centered with this coupler, and uh, yeah, because if it's not, then you can get some vibrations, stuff like that, and it can. Uh, even do some damage to your engine or your jet drive if it's not properly lined up. So we're gonna drop the engine in and uh, try to get it lined up and then bolt it down. Set this down right here. Okay, so we're gonna drop this in without the shims first, um, see how it lines up, and then we'll just uh, put a couple shims in at a time. Okay. Yep, so there's the view of the drive. Um, currently, the rear shaft is sitting probably about a millimeter above the uh, coupler on the engine. Just so, a quick reference these are the shims that we're using. These are the ones that came out. Now, there are two thick ones, and then three medium ones, and then one thin one. So I'm assuming the two thick ones um, are gonna line up with each other, probably on the front or the back. Um, and then we gotta figure out which uh, two medium ones go together, on which side, and uh, which thin one plus a medium one goes together. So I'll get those figured out, and then we'll uh, keep keep moving on so okay I think I got it um, let me try to show you coupler right there that's pretty much as as level as I can get it um, I used all the shims that came out of the ski so I'm not missing any so I feel pretty confident that it's it's lined up um, but yeah basically you just want it to line up so it's level um, so that the uh, the front coupler interfaces with the rear coupler um, as straight as possible. Um, you might be able to see if I rotate it, it rotates 
pretty smoothly. There's no no feeling like it's binding or anything. Um, so now we just gotta get the rubber um, bushing in between those two, and then uh, we can bolt the engine down for real. Then so now we're just gonna slide this backwards enough to uh, fit this bushing in between. Squeeze in there. Slide this on. Okay, now we put the shins back on. Just get them lightly tightened down first. And we'll torque them. I think the spec is 12 foot pounds, I want to say. So it's nothing crazy. Check the alignment. Yep, feels pretty good. Moves nice and smooth. Gonna start with these two screws on the top. We've got the uh, new gasket installed already. So. So we got this hose clamp right here. We're just gonna slide this down first. And slide this over. Get it all the way down on there. Kinda manhandle that on there. On. Put three bolts up here. I like having the, the chrome one in the middle. That's how it is on my VXR. Okay, so now next step is to get the muffler on. So, one thing you gotta remember about the muffler is the actual exhaust hose exhaust comes in through here but this cup this is a coupler right here this rubber tube has these two hose clamps on it this hose clamp connects the coupler to this on the inside of this ring and then this one connects it to this inner metal exhaust pipe right here and then this water jacket goes over all of this and clamps on to this ring up here so that's one thing you gotta remember just make sure you get everything tightened down. So we're Tighten up these hose clamps, both of these inner ones, and then we've got an outer one that will go over the top of this 
and connect to there. So I'll do that real quick and then I'll show you. Okay, there you go. You can see we got this outer hose clamp on the water jacket. Um, and then the two smaller ones are underneath right here. And they're uh, holding the coupling that holds the inner exhaust liner together. And then uh, the water just flows around the outside and out through the exhaust. So when you put this temperature sensor back, it just slots right in here. It is uh, held down with two small bolts, so I'll have to find those real quick so I can put it back. Uh, and then uh, we get the carburetor on and then get the wires back together and we should be good to test fire it. So, Okay, so I got the carburetor back on, got the uh, fuel lines reinstalled, um, spark plugs hooked up, so now we just need to uh, up the electrical. Um, also made sure to plug in all the uh, various cooling lines, the one that goes back to the jet drive in the back. Um, and uh, yeah, that should take care of the engine. Um, got the throttle back on, got the uh, choke. If you want to see some more in-depth stuff about like just putting this back together, it's not complicated, but on my other video for the VXR, I go a little bit more in-depth. Um, as far as putting an engine back together, at least the top parts, um, like the muffler, the exhaust, all that stuff. So uh, yeah, you can check that out, but now uh, on to the electrical. So now the last thing we need to do is wire the engine back up to the uh, controller. So, got these all wired up. Let's hit them with the heat gun. Whoops, that came undone. We'll get that way. Ground wire popped out before I could get it. And it was uh, it was not without incident. I did a uh, slice open my finger on the uh, top of the carburetor here when I was uh, installing some zip ties. So um, pretty deep cut, but I've had I've had worse. So. Uh, should hopefully heal up within the next two weeks or so. Um, cut my middle finger, you can kind of see that. That was about back when I was in high school. About the same, straight to the bone. But uh, yeah, it took, took about two weeks to heal, so I'll have to deal with that, but no biggie. We got everything installed. It's ready to go. Take it out for test drive tomorrow. It's getting a little late today, so uh, we'll have to wait. But yeah, there's an idea of all the tools I used, in case you were wondering what all goes into putting something like this back together. But, yeah. Yeah, these two things, this and this, probably my most used tools right there, along with my uh, impact driver. And that's pretty much all you need. <laughs> and uh, maybe a screwdriver, but, and a wrench maybe for some of those hard to reach ones that you can't get to with a uh, ratchet but uh yeah oh and then I got those tools over there which were just extra but it's glad I had that VXR though because it helped a lot with figuring out where everything went um, as far as putting this back together because they use the same engine um, slightly different layouts but um, pretty much exactly the same type of um, engine inside. So yeah, we'll get this closed up and tomorrow we'll hit the lake. Okay, so before we take this down the lake, um, got the hose hooked up to the engine. Um, we're just going to put some gas in the gas tank and make sure the fuel lines are working, that uh, it can get gas. So uh, once we get that done, then we can take it down the lake. Okay, so if you're running a jet ski out of the water and using a hose to cool it, the number one most important thing to remember is that you want to start the engine before you turn the water on. Because if you turn the water on before starting the engine, it can build up and flow backwards through the exhaust 
and uh, get into your cylinder and lock up your engine. Um, so you want to make sure the engine's running and then you can turn the water on. That's why I've got a, a quick um, valve up at the top here that I can just turn the water on and off. Um, so if you're running it and the engine um, stalls or something, you want to be able to make sure you can quickly turn that water off um, so that it doesn't lock up on you. So we're going to start this up and then turn the water on and uh, just make sure that it's getting gas. So. It'll take a little bit since it's got to get gas in all those lines. up and take it to the lake. back 
in, but works good enough. running of any jet ski I've had. Might. So the way this is running right now, it really kind of makes me want to almost overhaul and rebuild the VXR because this thing, it's got a lot of power. So uh, that might be uh, next on the project list as far as jet skis go. Um, just overhauling the VXR. Maybe get a new impeller on it because I know uh, the impeller on it's not looking that great. I think it's got a chunk missing out of one of the blades. So probably want to look into that um but yeah this thing runs great it starts right up um it's smooth no rattling or anything so uh yeah we'll probably look at getting that vxr fixed up and uh that's about it for this one but uh yeah hope you had fun watching this video and uh see you in the next one i'm gonna drive this around some more